back to the channel and if you are new here my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take secondhand finds and make them over but in today's video there's a little bit of a twist with the rising prices of everything you just find items out and about in the world that are cost efficient to make over and I just happen to be checking out Walmart's Easter aisle and I thought oh my gosh that is like Goodwill prices and I can envision sharing the process of making these over with you all so that is what is in today's video and there's a little bit of an extra bonus at the end of a different DIY. Yep these gold bunnies just caught my eye they were just screaming make me over and I'm like hey that's about what I'd have to pay at Goodwill for a individual bunny like this so why not now I I'm not super fan of the really gold. I would love to bring out the accent. They're just some resin pieces, but they definitely have a lot of detail. So I'm going to go ahead and get these stickers removed and get these cleaned up so we can give them a makeover. So all I did was wipe them down with a Clorox wipe just to make sure there wasn't any residue. So now I'm just going to be painting them over. Yep, just hand painting them using some Color Fusion. The Color Fusion is nice because it's all in one. It's got your primer and your top coat in it. But it's a light color. The Victorian Lace is a light color so it's going to take a couple coats to cover. Especially since I'm trying to get into all those little grooves of this bunny. Now that, just because this is an all-in-one paint with the primer and the top coat does not mean it is a one coat coverage. As you see, the first coat is definitely see-through. You see some places that I missed. And so with the second coat, it's definitely covering a lot better. It gave that second coat something to grab onto a little bit more. Did have to go back in with a third coat just to get it to grab in a couple little places, but they are completely covered. I did take the time to paint their bottom so that gold was not showing. Now I'm do using some of this antiquing glaze. Oh my goodness, it's going to actually get right into all those little detailed areas, the little places where the legs and the arms are. Oh my gosh, so I'm going to just using a stencil brush to go ahead and get it on and then what I'll do is I'll go back with a paper towel and wipe off the excess. Now I get that these three are already super cute as is, but I'm a painting channel, I'm a DIY. So I'm going to try three different paint techniques that I saw on Pinterest. So just an idea if you see something when you're thrifting or if you're like me, you're like, hey, that's the price of Goodwill nowadays um, to pick something up and transform it. Or maybe you just have some old Easter decor laying around that you're like, hey, I wanna give this a facelift. Oh, I absolutely love the aged effect of a green and a gold and maybe some brown in there. So I'm starting off with, oh, this has to be one of my favorite colors. I did say color, y'all. Yes, eggshell. Oh, this French eggshell is just absolutely gorgeous. Yep, I did have to go back with two coats to completely cover, but I did the whole item. Actually, I did not do the bottoms of these. I think it almost has a wood look, so if I keep it clean, it'll be good to go. But I'm going to go ahead and use some of the rub and buff to make some of the gold accents. So first, I just kind of started dotting places here and there where I thought I wanted some of that smudge of gold to be. So yeah, I didn't want it to look like a Dalmatian with a whole bunch of spots. I wanted, to, I wanted it to look like an aged bunny.
So I think on this effect, it's either the green has wore off and you see the gold underneath or the gold has wore off and you see the green underneath. Either way, I'm kind of connecting my splotches of my gold. Now to take it up one more notch, yep, I'm going to add some of the antiquing, Waverly's antiquing wax. And that's that brown, I think, that ties it all together. So I'm just going to apply it with a brush and then I'm going to go ahead and wipe off. Now I actually let my rub and buff dry for about an hour so I make sure that I wasn't smudging it all over the place. I wanted to make sure that that was on there, but oh, this is definitely bringing everything all together. So next up is this, there's like a brown underneath that one with a white that was chippy on the top. So I'm starting off with my bare paint that I colored matched for the coffee bean color from Dixie Belle. So this is a nice, rich, dark, dark brown. Now I'm going to be using Vaseline to get that chipped off paint look. So my brown paint is dry. I'm just going to add smudges of the Vaseline with a paintbrush. You can add it with your finger. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just trying to do here and there where I think paint would naturally wear off if you kept grabbing on an object. I'm going to go back and use the Victorian lace color again. It's a beautiful white color. Now I'm going to do heavy coats. This is a one coat coverage. So a lot of paint on my brush. I'm going to try to go in the same direction. I'm trying not to smear my Vaseline too much. It might spread out a little bit, but as you see, I'm just doing a nice heavy coat to get it covered. Yes, in the middle of crafting, sometimes weather happens and we had an ice storm here in Michigan at the time I was doing this craft. So I just thought if you don't follow me on my other social medias that I would share that with you. Yeah, when that tree branch fell in our workshop, I was in there working on this project and oh, did that ever startle me, you know. But the ice was beautiful, but it was a little scary when people were out of power for quite a few days. So when it came to taking the Vaseline off the bunny, unfortunately it was three days before I could get back to this project, you all. So you know what? Vaseline, if you don't take it off, apparently will just cause crackle. And it's actually a very pretty crackle. Even if I tried to do the glue technique, it's a really a pretty crackle. Oh, how I'd love to run across a bunny on wheels, but I'll take the bunny on a stand. So I am using some of this brown apple barrel paint, and I think that is a close match to what the underneath color is of that brown I saw in the picture. You can see with the apple barrel paint, it's just a nice see-through coat on the first just to get the paint applied. I did clean all these off with Clorox wipes. You still want to get that manufacturer's 
um, sealant, anything that would prevent the paint from sticking on, even though when it's a new item, I just didn't show that in the video. So yes, this took a couple, actually three coats to get it completely to cover. So Apple Barrel may, may not be the best kind of paint to, to do this type of a project. Oh my goodness, did that ever dry super shiny. Oh, I did not know it was that shiny. So I was going to go back in with just my antiquing wax and give it some age, but I know that the antiquing wax is probably just going to kind of slide off this glossy of a finish. So even though I applied it, I actually went back in with that previous bare brown color, the coffee bean match color, um, to actually get that brown look, that brown spotchy look that I was looking for. After I got it kind of rubbed in, I actually kind of just patted my um, cloth on it just to give it more of that spotchy look that I wasn't completely just rubbing it off. Now my next DIY is actually not a Walmart flip. I know those carrots are super cute, but I know a lot of people are showing y'all how to do those on YouTube right now, Instagram, the whole, everybody's doing them. So I thought, you know what? One of my great sellers last year were these buddy, bunny molds. And these are just the chocolate molds that you buy off of Amazon, you know, to make chocolate bunnies. I'm actually going to use Plaster of Paris in these to make them look like the metal bunny molds. First off, I have to seal the two together and it's actually easier than you think. I just have some of the paper clips, these black paper clips that you can pick up the Dollar Tree store and as long as I have everything lined up, they make a nice tight seal. You see the bottoms are open, so I had cut that off from the form. So now I actually put one of the bigger paper clips so that it had a nice strong base to stand upright. Now I'm just needing blocks of wood to help hold them upright. So now I'm just going to mix up my plaster of Paris. It says like a one to two ratio, like two things of powder to one thing of water, but just just mix it up to what you think is a workable consistency. So I just in a separate bowl and putting my ingredients and then I will just stir it up until it's kind of like that cake batter type of look. Now that I have it at that cake batter consistency, I don't have any lumps, no lumps. I'm just going to start spooning it into my mold. Now I try to even out that bottom top part as much as I can. I don't want to overfill it too much. But luckily, pa Plaster of Paris is pretty easy to sand to make a flat base. But now if you get any air bubbles, like you can see I have some air bubbles when I'm filling the next one, I just take a bamboo skewer, skewer and try to work in some of that Plaster of Paris in that air pocket. Now I'm just going to set these off in a spot in our workshop and I'm going to let them dry for a couple days. Yep, it actually takes a little bit of planning because these do take a couple days to set up. Now, even after a couple of days, they will still feel cold. So that means it's not completely cured. But what I need to do now is I need to just take an X-Acto knife 
and remove some of that excess that is a little bit longer than I want it to. I don't want to completely make it flat because I want it to look, my finished look is going to be one of those old metal candy molds. So as you know, they have those clamping areas together. So I just want to clean it up a bit. Now while I'm doing some painting and some cleanup, Chris is going to go ahead and take the sander and sand these guys' bottoms down so they are flat and not chunky. Now, you don't necessarily have to have a machine like this to do that. It doesn't take too long if you do. Or you can just lay sandpaper on your table and just go back and forth. Like I said, the plaster of Paris, especially since this is not completely set up yet, sands really easy. I have steel and silver lining the Waverly chalk paint. So I'm going to go ahead and mix the two of these together, hoping to achieve that background metal look that I'm looking for. And apparently I need to get a new bottle of the steel because it seemed a lot darker <laughs> than it actually was. Um, I think it has darkened kind of over time, but once I mix the two together, it may have been a little bit on the light side, but you know, you kind of just work with what you have in your cupboards. After I got all three colored, I thought, oh, this is still a little bit light. So I just went back in with just the steel color and repainted them. So now that my paint is dry and I did do their bottoms also to make it look like what I'm going for, I am actually using some of the rub and buff in the silver. So I want to give them that metal look. And so just stencil brush, some of the rub and buff, it really spreads very easily. And then as I'm doing it, I'm like, yeah, they got the metal look, but they still don't have that age to them. So I actually am going to go back in with some ebony rub and buff and just add just a tad, just a tad, a little bit of black is going to go a long way. Oh my goodness, were the first two bunnies just not the cutest? Something about that Victorian lace and the antiquing glaze just took them to the next level. And the thing, if you keep it neutral like that, that is decor that you can keep out year round. You don't just have to keep it out for Easter season. And then, a, you know, a bunny on a stick. And there was three of them. So I'm like, you know, why not share with you three different paint techniques that I found inspiration when I saw pictures. Can I reproduce them? Can What is my vision of how to get that look? Though those were probably old and antique but it's nice to share my vision and the process of the painting technique to get to that. And then the molds, oh my goodness. Yes, I made a lot of those last year. Um, and they just, they sold, they sold like hotcakes and it was the metal to look like metal. So they were just absolutely fun. You know, it's a little time consuming because you have to wait for the plasters to set up, but it's really a super simple craft, y'all. So let me know down in the comments below, have I inspired you in any way? And even just to look at, you know, the Walmart aisle, it's kind of like going to the Dollar General Dollar Tree. You just find inspiration, what is cost efficient to make over. And if the vision hits you, grab it, just grab it. So again, thanks for watching guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you enjoyed today's video, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys. And you can see what we're up to. Bye.